All right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our decal in position. Hold it in place with a little bit of tape. And peel the top down. And then use a letter opener. And we can cut the backer right in half. You don't have rapid tech to put your uh, decals on. You could always use Windex or something like that. And I repeat the process for the bottom. The most important thing is to make sure that the stencil is wet so that we can fight this, uh, this character line. And we're going to fight that character line. And I fought that stupid thing for the better part of the video. I think I spent more time trying to smooth out wrinkles there than uh, I actually did airbrushing. But do the best you can. Get all the air pockets out. The better job you do putting a stencil on. Make your life a whole lot easier when it comes time to do some airbrushing. So once you're happy with the placement, you peel the mask off or the uh, the transfer tape and just move it and use it as masking tape. I've had pretty good results making up uh, like a little air dam. Kind of like uh, what you see there in the picture. Kind of keeps overspray at check. There you go, we're all masked off. And this is where the fan cap on the uh, Pache Vision really shines. It's uh, putting down a flat spray pattern, three inches wide. And you can see from the test sprays that I'm doing there at the bottom of the piece that uh, it's not shooting a circle. It's shooting an oval or elliptical pattern. And that's great when you start doing overlaps and overlapping your layer. Like exactly what I was doing there, just blacking out. Uh, or bucket fill, basically, a, a giant area. And I've converted over to the conventional nozzle and head. And uh, started doing some shading. Shade the outside. Uh, about as dark as what you think you would want it. Maybe not go quite so dark. Um, this one here, I'm actually going for kind of like a worn, battle-worn kind of thing. So I'm going to shade all this again, and I'm going to shade it pretty dark. You'll see at the end of the video, it's maybe a little bit overshaded, but it'll make sense in the next video. So I had a little bit of shading. Um, if you're not going for that uh, worn-out, beat-up battle kind of look, then... Uh, you could probably stop after this stage right here. Just uh, throw a little shadows to it. And uh, away you go. If you're dealing with any color other than white, you can always go back and add some white highlights. Uh, that would make more sense on a piece that's, say, red or orange, something like that, but... Uh, not really necessary when your background is already white. So here it is with a little bit of war damage, uh, battle damage behind, uh, you know, behind the torn metal. And, uh, I'm going to go behind all this and I'm going to do rivets on top of uh, the rivets and sheet metal for the next video. So be sure to check back.